1978 Nishigen Pachinko Machine. We're going to ship you your cabinet and your machine in two separate boxes. You'll want to assemble your cabinet first, then put your glass back into the front of the machine here, then you can put the machine into the cabinet. And when you put it in the cabinet, you'll want to set the bottom in first, uh, just a little bit, then slide the top in, and then push the whole machine into the cabinet. And it's a tight squeeze, so you might have to push on one side and push on the other until you get it flush with the cabinet. Then you can screw the two screws on each side of the cabinet that hold the machine into the cabinet. So before you start playing your machine, there are two things you want to do on the back. The first is this seesaw here, this white a rectangular piece. It's in the wrong position now. You're going to need to push it down like that and that resets it into the proper position. Next you'll want to fix the ball uh, drain lever. I'm going to zoom in. So this white piece here, you see how it's at an angle that's angled over to the left? You're going to want to make sure, just grab that metal part there, pull down, and now it's perpendicular. So now that's in the locked position. Next, if this is up, just flip it down. And I've wired your machine so you can either run it off a 9 volt battery, which is right here, um, or the transformer that you can plug into the wall. It's just got a couple of bare wires stripped here at the end of the transformer. Uh, basically what you do either, for either one, so here for the battery, uh, I've taken the two wires that come out of this battery connection and you put them into the white and the yellow post. And it doesn't matter which uh, wire goes into which post. The way those posts work is you just push down on the post, and as you push down, then you're able to slide the wire out. So as we connect the 9 volt battery, the light comes on here. Um, this light uh, is to tell you that you need to add balls to the supply tray and back. In the front of the machine, when this light comes on, that's the indicator that you need to add balls. There it is off. There's a light behind here and also behind here that when you get a jackpot those will flash. In addition to the light coming on and back you have a wait sign in your play tray window. It actually says wait and when that sign pops down that's another indicator that you need to fill your machine with balls. Finally there's a lever in back that in addition to when the wait sign comes down, it blocks the flow of balls to the shooter lane. So the balls are coming in here and there is a, a stop behind here that when that sign drops down, it's, it blocks the flow of balls. You may still be able to shoot about six or eight balls that are in the shooter assembly, but once those are gone, if you're flipping and uh, nothing's happening, that's probably because that lever has popped down and blocked the flow. Go ahead and load some balls into your play tray right here. Now when we load balls in the back supply tray, what will happen is they'll come down, uh, enter into this upper track, and they'll roll down the track, all the way down, around the turn, back across these levers here, and into the jackpot seesaw, which is inside here. Um, if you ever need to get in there, there's a little light white tab there. You can just slide that over and um, slide it to the right, and then pivot it down and you can see the seesaw right there. Pour the balls in and when I do you'll see this lever move down turning off this switch which will turn off that light. Now when you put your balls in your machine you won't put them directly in the tray you'll put them in the wooden funnel box that's on top of your cabinet. And as you pour them in that box, pour slowly, and then they'll drop down into the uh, supply tray. After you load the balls in the supply tray through your cabinet, you want to take your white tray and slide it in the bottom compartment of the cabinet. Just slide it in the middle, and it'll catch the balls. And then when you need to refill, you just slide it out, pour them up through the funnel, and back. Play pachinko, typically you just take your finger, put it underneath the finger rest bar, and take your thumb and pull down and then let go real quickly. The first time you load the machine, nothing will happen because the ball is getting loaded into the shooter assembly. I'll do it again. And the ball shot all the way across. Now, uh, these games require some skill. So when I pulled it all the way down and let go, the ball shot all the way across 
and entered what's called the foul lane here. There's a little plastic swing. Here's a close-up of the foul lane. And when a ball enters the foul lane, it goes, it just goes down, and then it gets returned back to your feeder uh, play tray. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to pull it down part of the way and let go and and you'll experiment with different techniques like you could put two fingers here pull the flipper down to the top of the finger or put one finger pull it down uh, but basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the ball to drop in the middle or maybe drop over here or drop over here so how much pressure you put uh, pull back on the flipper that's going to tell you where the ball is going to go we'll play a little bit So a ball went in the tulip, the tulip was open so it closed and we saw the lights flash and we got paid out of jackpot. It doesn't matter which pocket or tulip or even the center main attraction, it doesn't matter where your ball goes, if it goes in one of those areas you get paid out the same amount. Um, I'll go ahead and drop a ball in through the top of the main pocket so you can see what happens. We've got several jackpots and the balls are building up in the uh, uh, play tray. And in order to get them out of the play tray, you're going to push this lever, push it over to the left, and when you do, the balls should roll behind the machine and down into your receiving tray. If they don't, it could, could be because of the way the balls is jamming them up. In case all you do is you stick your finger here and push the balls back to kind of loosen the weight. In that case, they worked fine. Now another time balls will go into the receiving tray is, uh, well they'll go there automatically. If this tray is too full then they'll flow here automatically. Um, but if you pull down on your flipper and you don't pull down far enough, the ball will go up part way up your lane and then it will roll back down into your receiving tray. Now if you have someone who doesn't know how to play, maybe they put their whole hand on the flipper, they may do that. Now what they've done is they've loaded a ball in the shooter lane, but they haven't shot it out, so it's sitting there. So the next time you pull down a flipper, it's going to put another ball in the lane. Now, I could potentially have two, so I'll try and shoot. That was actually three at that point. Um, and there wasn't enough power to get them all out. So one came up, um, but the other two rolled down here. We'll take a look at what happens when you get a uh, jackpot from the back. So we're going to start out with there's a tulip right here and I'm going to drop a ball in that tulip and you'll be able to watch it fall down and it will basically roll over into that seesaw that we res reset at the beginning. So it'll go into that seesaw, that seesaw will pivot down and then that ball will flow over and it'll come down and hit this arm when it hits that arm, it'll push this out of the way. This arm will pivot down, and as it does, it'll activate your jackpot. That arm is attached here to a pole in the back of the machine going up to the uh, jackpot seesaw. When it pivots the jackpot seesaw, the balls that are in there will come down here. Um, hit a metal plate, roll down, and then hit a bell here, and then go out into your play tray. Uh, so the balls will all be back here, but you'll be able to see those. Okay, let's drop them in. We'll do that again a couple times. Okay, so that's how the jackpot works. That's all for our quick start guide. You can be sure to watch our instruction DVD. It has several hours of tips and tricks on how to maintain and troubleshoot your machine. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy it.